everyone in the world needs to eat some food every day. So as an investor, it could be a good idea to invest in an agricultural company uh, since there will be lots of constant demand for food throughout the US and the world. And that's where Archer Daniels Midland comes into play, which is the company I'll be analyzing in today's video, which is the fourth video in my subscriber suggested stock analysis series. If you want me to analyze a specific stock in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel and join the free discord, which there will be a link in the description below. And you can add your company or even multiple companies to the list of stocks that I'll analyze in the future. So Archer Daniels Midland, ticker symbol ADM, is an agricultural supply chain manager and processor that is involved in many of the foods that we eat on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, they split their business into three main segments. The first of these is called ag services and oil seeds. So this segment has business in the supply chain and transportation of many agricultural raw materials and is involved in the production and sale of many ingredients for food, energy, and industrial uses. Uh, for example, this segment produces renewable green diesel and salad oils, which are used to make margarine shortening and other food products. And they also produce other some other oils that are used in industrial products, such as chemicals and paints. This segment is by far the largest for ADM, which provides about 65% of their operating profit. Uh, the next segment is the carbohydrates solution segment, which is primarily involved in the processing of corn and wheat into products and ingredients for other products. So this segment produces sweeteners, starches, syrups, and also quite notably ethanol. Um, and this segment produces about 19% of the company's operating profits. And the final segment is the nutrition segment, which is focused more on end products or consumer markets. And it manufactures and sells a wide array of products, including plant-based proteins, natural flavors and colors, and pet foods also. Uh, the nutrition segment generates about 11% of the company's operating profit. And then there's uh, a miscellaneous 5% there that comes from other businesses within the company, such as commodity trading and insurance operations. So now that we have an understanding of Archer Daniels Midland's business, let's take a look at some of their recent financial results, starting with how they performed in 2022. So for the full year, they had revenues of $102 billion, which was up an incredible 19% from 2021. And their net income for the year was $4.3 billion, which was a staggering 60% increase year over year. Uh, and the quite impressive part as well is that 2021 was not a lackluster year by any stretch of the imagination. Um, in terms of 2021, they saw top and bottom line growth compared to 2020. And 2020, again, um, you know, it wasn't a lackluster year either. They didn't really see much growth um, because of the pandemic largely, but they didn't really see any decline either, uh, like happened in many other businesses. So I think what can be learned here is that the agricultural industry is very much needed in both good times and bad. And so their business uh, is quite resilient and um, sticky in, you know, all kinds of macroeconomic conditions. And more recently, the company reported their second quarter 2023 results uh, just a few weeks ago on the 25th of July. And for that second quarter, ADM reported revenues of $25.2 billion, which was down about 8% from the second quarter of last year. Uh, but that's not too surprising given just how incredible 2022 was for the business combined with, you know, some of the economic pressures that, you know, pretty much all businesses are facing this year. Uh, net income for the quarter was only $927 million, which was down about 25% uh, compared to the second quarter of 2022. Um, but because of the generally low margins of a company like ADM, uh, when revenues fall, net incomes are likely to fall more on a percentage basis. Um, but the opposite is also true on the upside. So as revenues grow, um, net income is likely to grow more on a percentage as basis as well, which is exactly what we saw happen in 2022. So overall, I don't really think these lower results are too big of a deal at this point. Um, given really the larger economic picture, uh, a lot of companies are struggling. And so if they have a little bit poorer results this year and maybe next year, uh, that's really not that big of a deal as long as they can rebound in, you know, at least a few years down the line. Uh, notably, though, their interest expense has more than doubled since last year, um, which makes perfect sense given rising interest rates, but it's still less than one fifth of their net income, uh, which is perfectly healthy, I think. So the next thing I like to look at is a company's balance sheet, and that can really help us understand their financial stability and strength. It's certainly important for a company to be producing strong financial results. 
um, but it's also equally important, if not more important, for a company to have a strong foundation in their balance sheet because sooner or later there will be a recession or the business you know, will slow down for one reason or another. And when that happens, uh, if the company doesn't have a fortified balance sheet, they could get into some serious trouble there. And I really want to put emphasis on that when that happens, because it's not really a question of if it's a question of when, uh, you know, there's going to be bad times, there's going to be recessions, there's going to be, you know, just times when the business is struggling. And that's perfectly normal for all types of businesses. Um, so we want to make sure that they're really prepared for those times by having a strong balance sheet. Uh, so looking at the balance sheet right here, we can see they have about $1.4 billion of cash on hand, and they have a lot of other current assets, including inventories of about $11.9 billion, which those inventories are actually down significantly from last year, which is generally a good thing to see as that means they have less uh, idle capital lying around. So adding all that up, that brings them to total current assets of $30.7 billion. And if we look down to the current liabilities, those are only a total of $18.8 .8 billion. So their current ratio is much greater than one and is even approaching two, which is pretty awesome to see. Another great thing to see is that their short-term debt is only $125 million and long-term debt is about $8.2 billion, which gives them total debt of about $8.4 billion. Uh, this $8.4 billion is pretty much within the boundaries of where I like to see debt which is at a level that is no more than twice the company's net income, uh, which for 2022 was $4.3 billion. Uh, 2022 was a record year, and so net income is definitely not guaranteed to be you know, above $4 billion. It might be a little bit lower this year. Uh, we really can't predict that well. Um, but you know, in the case that, you know, net income is a little bit below $4 billion, then maybe the debt level is a little bit closer to pushing the boundaries of what would be safe. Um, but as well, uh, they do have a lot of cash on hand, about $1.4 billion of cash. So that does make the debt load uh, a lot more manageable, I think. And another you know, positive sign for the balance sheet is that they do have a large pile of shareholders equity of almost $25 billion, which is a lot bigger, um, close to three times the size of their debt, um, which further suggests that the debt level is really perfectly healthy right now. Uh, so overall, I think the balance sheet is particularly strong. And yet another point that illustrates that is that their current assets alone that we mentioned earlier of $30.7 billion can actually cover all of their $30.2 billion of total liabilities, uh, which is a pretty remarkable feat and speaks a lot to the strength of ADM's balance sheet. On this channel, I mostly talk about dividend stocks, but that's not the only type of company that could be good to invest in. But it does happen that ADM pays a dividend with a yield right now of about 2%. And their payout ratio is also quite low at 22%, which gives them tons of room to grow the dividend in the future, which is, you know, what we as shareholders want is a growing dividend. Um, if we do look at the past few years of growth, over the past five years, they've raised the dividend about 5.3% on average, which is a little bit lower than I would like to see. But it looks like that rate has been accelerating a little bit in the past two years. So in 2022, they raised the dividend about 8%. And then in the beginning of 2023, they raised the dividend 12.5%. So I'm hoping they can kind of maintain a dividend growth rate that's a little bit higher, maybe in the higher single digits in the future, which I think they really can, given you know the growth of the business and also the low payout ratio that they currently have. Um, and then finally, looking at their dividend raise streak, they do have a very long history of growing the dividend. Uh, this number on Seeking Alpha is wrong, but they do have 51 consecutive years of dividend increases, which is really awesome to see. And that actually makes them a dividend king. And it shows shareholders that you know they have a commitment to grow the dividend. And over time, we can expect them more than likely to continue raising that dividend for a long time into the future. So at this point in the analysis, if you're still interested in the company, the next step is to decide whether it's currently a good time to buy the stock or not. And to do that, I basically use two simple valuation metrics uh, to help me determine whether the stock is trading above or below the fair value of the company. Uh, these are certainly not perfect valuation metrics, but they can give me uh, a rough idea of you know kind of what the fair value of the company is and where that is in relation to the current stock price. So the first method that we're going to take a look at is the price to earnings ratio. And right now for ADM, the PE is about 15. And as we can see from this chart that shows the 
historical PE for ADM over the past 10 or 15 years. Their average PE over that time frame has been about 13. So right now the PE ratio is a little bit above their average, but it's really not a super significant amount or anything to really worry about. Um, I also like to compare the PE ratio to that of their peers. So looking at the consumer defensive sector, the average for that sector is 21. And within the consumer packaged goods industry, the average price to earnings ratio there is 23. So in terms of what knowledge we can get from that PE ratio, I think right now the PE is telling us that ADM is kind of somewhere in the range of fair value right now, um, generally speaking, compared to their historical averages and to other companies in their sector and industry. Um, but I think it also helps to take a look at a second valuation metric, which we'll do right now. And that second valuation metric is a discounted cash flow model. Uh, so for Archer Daniels Midland, they're really not the ideal company for a DCF calculation because they actually did have negative free cash flow in 2019 and 2020. And generally their free cash flow is just not very consistent and it's not very consistently in line with their net income, which you generally like to see. But I did still perform the analysis for ADM um, and I tried to be kind of conservative and you know take some of my best guesses um, for some of the assumptions essentially. Uh, and when I did the calculation, I got a fair value of $62 per share and with a 10% margin of safety that gives us a buy price of about $56 per share. Uh, this is assuming a 10% required rate of return, which right now I think is quite reasonable and maybe even on the lower end, uh, given the current interest rates we're experiencing. Um, and that really points to the company being overvalued right now because the st current stock price is around $87. Um, so that pretty much means, you know, the current stock price is worth 87, uh, but the DCF is saying the business is only worth 62 or so, uh, which means the company right now looks to be overvalued. So on the whole, I think Archer Daniels Midland is a fundamentally strong company. And I think they also have an opportunity to be a big player in the newer plant-based food market. Um, I'm certainly no big fan of eating only plants or plant-derived substances because I certainly like meat a lot. Um, I enjoy eating meat, um, but that's certainly a market that is growing a lot and at least looks to have some potential there. Um, and even if ADM doesn't necessarily do a lot of innovating in that space, which I think they are, um, but they don't really even have to because they have the size right now where they can you know, buy up or invest in some smaller startups and get a big advantage that way as well. Um, in terms of the valuation that we just talked about, um, it does look a little bit overvalued to me, um, but you know, just because I think it's a little overvalued doesn't mean that that's right or correct. Uh, you might do some analysis and get some different numbers and that's perfectly fine. Um, it's just kind of a matter of how confident you are in those numbers. And for me, I think one of the big things I would want to look into more is why they had that negative free cash flow in 2019 and 2020 and why the free cash flow of the business isn't super consistent or in line with net income. And uh, they also had negative free cash flow even a few years before 2019. So I just kind of want to understand that more um, and probably get some more confidence in my DCF calculation. And that would just help me have a better understanding of the business as well and just be more confident in any investing decision I did make. So given all my current knowledge of the company, I don't really think I'd be interested in the stock unless it was, you know, below $60, probably closer to $50 even. Uh, but I would love to hear your thoughts and comments below whether you think the company is, you know, a great company, terrible company, overvalued, undervalued, whatever. Uh, let me know so that myself and others can hear your perspectives and maybe get some new ideas for ourselves. If you want to chat on a regular basis, uh, with myself and other long-term investors, feel free to join the Discord. It's free and there's a link in the description. And thanks for watching to the end of the video. I'll see you all in the next one.